think one of the big challenge is uh, to be hardware agnostics because uh, we, we find very few greenfield projects. Normally, you, you find a, a, a city that is already there, and you need to to connect all of these all of these systems in, in one in one platform. This uh, this means that we need to have a hardware agnostic to be able to connect to all of them without any problem to, to, to support all the standards and, and protocols in order to be able to, to, to connect to this uh, central control room. Uh, this is, I think, one of the, the biggest. The second, perhaps, is what I told you before, that is uh, this, this silos approach that is typical in the infrastructure organization where they, they look for a, a, a a solution for their own problem. That means that the water guys goes to, to look for the water solution, but they don't care about the traffic solution or the uh, tunnel solution. And this is something that is, a, uh, is something that we uh, need to push these customers to change a little bit their mind in order to be more holistic vision and to start to, 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 to work with these solutions in this direction, in this horizontal direction. I think those are the, the biggest uh, challenge that we find when we are looking for uh, these kind of projects. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say that also that when, when we have all, all connected also is how, how we get this knowledge from these silos, how we get this key information and how we can get this knowledge to the, to the central system, okay, how we can provide model type of system so customers can model this information, can understand this information and can subtract this key information from the different silos and modelize in their system so they can understand and they can play with this information in a, in a very easy way. So I think that's, that's the next challenge, you know, how we can get this knowledge from the systems and put this knowledge into, into, into our system and modelize this system being by uh, controlling your assets or being like having workflows that can uh, also create a standard process and how it can, can manage this knowledge and how can I manage this talent that I have in, in the automation system. And, and to go one level up beyond that is the decision on where to put this yeah. platform. Where, where do I put it? I can't put my infrastructure platform in the water treatment facility. It just doesn't make any sense, yeah. <laughs> right? So you have to you have to develop and nurture the vision of the systems of systems approach. And we've had many situations, many scenarios where where our visionaries within large cities are the CIOs and the CTOs of cities that control the IT infrastructure, and and merging. OT systems or operational technology systems in with information technology systems is sometimes a challenge. Um, nobody, <laughs> it's sometimes a challenge, let's just put it that way. So to have, to have the proper vision set within city leadership is, is mm -hmm. problem number one. Where am I going to put this thing? And most cities have data centers. Right. So if you apply your if we apply our infrastructure technology uh, in the uh, city's data centers and then connect all of the siloed systems up into the city IT infrastructure, secure it, cyber secure it, make sure that uh, we prevent intrusion. What we've essentially done is we've created uh, an intranet for our infrastructure. That is the key. Having the right visionary the right decision maker with the vision to say, look, um, we're gonna control all of this information from one single location. It just doesn't make sense to put it in a silo. Mm -hmm. So where are we gonna put it is, is one of the big challenges. And that's the conversations that we have with reference to uh, infrastructure and smart cities. Put a silo is easy, just put it here, right? So we have to have that IT, OT collaboration in order to achieve our goals. In fact, so many times we, we finish an, an smart city approach connecting the silos that they already did in the past. That's right. Yeah. Because they, they find that they have a solution for water, a solution for traffic, but they don't have this completely picture. And uh, it's this kind of thing that sometimes we need to put a platform on top in order to connect all those so, silos. Well, yeah. you don't sell a smart city, right? Uh, a hmm. smart city is an idea. You just can't walk into the city of 
and say, you want to buy a smart city, right? Mm -hmm. You have to start somewhere with something. Yeah. And typically what we're finding is that smart city initiatives, infrastructure initiatives, smart start with the biggest expenditure. And, and typically the biggest expenditure is? <laughs> Which one? Yeah, you pick one. <laughs> water. Water, water, for water, example. Water. water. Buildings, the energy Building. consumption in yeah. a building, right? That's a tremendous, that's a trem yeah. and, and the exercise there was sometimes it's different. Sometimes a city doesn't have any problem with um, energy consumption in a building because yeah. it's a very temperate climate and not a lot of humidity. You just roll the windows down and you're, yeah. you're good to go. But the cost of pumping water may be the single biz biggest expenditure. So you have to start with where their problem is. Yeah convince them that there's a subset of information that exists within that silo that we can leverage to help you make better decisions about that expenditure and how to improve it and become more efficient with it. Uh, and then you start with the next biggest. Yeah. Is traffic a problem for you? Is um, uh, airport, yeah. whatever, yeah. is that a problem yeah. with you? And you go it's from there. there. So <laughs> infrastructure starts holistically by tying one silo into a platform and then continuing to build upon that vision of moving from silo to silo to silo yeah. to make better decisions for whatever reasons the city may feel is important to them. Yeah, yeah it's a journey and I know it's also interesting to see how customer also understands and is buying on this on this concept and starting to think on new ideas. Yes. Once he understands this, mm -hmm. how can, oh, what, then I can connect to this and then do this that I, I'm not able to do that. And so it's a journey and, and it's also funny to see how customer also understands this concept and start to bring the ideas and the business cases that uh, that enables to connect to other silos, to uh, improve uh, operations. So it's, it's And when you tell an IT department, when you tell a CIO yeah. or a CTO that you don't have to buy uh, exist another technology in order to achieve that result yeah. that you can leverage the the, the, the expenditure the expense that you've already already bought to do these things it's one less support contract it's one less vendor relationship that you have to yeah. manage and and there is an argument a very strong argument for cities to consider this type of solution as a sole source proposition which means we we uh, we minimize the the expense to write up a proposal consulting fees we just continue to show our unique value propositions and allow them to grow the system that they have those are intrinsic uh, almost intangible value propositions that we don't think about on on that level because this conversation we're having about uh, centralization of infrastructure in smart cities is a very new and emerging conversation to have. Yeah. This is an important point. For instance, I have an example for Barcelona Airport, where before to, to adapt this platform, they had uh, 20 or 30 uh, contracts in maintenance. Yeah. Uh, after our uh, standardization and centralized it, now they have one. Right. That's and on, not only one, they change this supplier three times. Yeah. That means that even is able to do several companies. That means that there are some competition that allow, allow them to, to save money and to, to save time. And this is really important because they, yeah. they have less operators, less uh, maintenance cost, less contracts, less uh, technological yeah, huge. needs, etc. Et et yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that's one of the uh, times where they feel freedom. Yeah. freedom to use our ecosystem to use anyone they feel wow now i i have the control of the of this asset it's my asset i can control and i can select from different vendors from different uh, uh, integrator from a, a big ecosystem that we offer so they feel okay this is the right choice because i'm not stuck with one provider i'm not stuck with this uh, with these people to just manage this water system so i can choose from a big ecosystem so I'm the one deciding, so I can have a one maintenance contract, I can change the provider if I like, I can stay with the provider, so they feel this freedom. And, and I think it's it's nice in this infrastructure market. If you compare with, with in the industry, industrial market, manufacturing, they, they have more uh, control of their assets. And when the infrastructure people starts to feel this freedom, you see it, it's very nice experience with them, so they, they, they can, they feel the control of their assets and the freedom to to, to choose yeah. what they want without voiding a warranty or yes. without yeah that's a 
That's uh, those big maintenance contracts and service agreements are something that uh, are stifling because yeah. it's a five year, 10 year contract yeah, and they're exactly. stuck with it. Yeah. They can't they can't replace a thermostat or, or, or anything without engaging the service provider yeah. and being able to empower themselves and take ownership of their own systems is something maybe not unique to our technology, but something that uh, uh, is unique in the industry.